Hi, this is problem number six of 2018 International Math Olympiad that was held this month in Romania. A convex quadrilateral ABCD satisfies the equality AB times CD equals BC times DA. Point X lies inside ABCD so that angles XAB and XCD are congruent and angles XBC and XDA are congruent. Prove that the sum of angles BXA and DXC equals 180 degrees. The description of this problem is short, but it's certainly not as simple as it sounds. Let's use a creative method of constructing the configuration described in this problem. Draw two arbitrary circles that intersect at points B and D. These two points are two ends of diagonal BD of quadrilateral ABCD. The line that goes through two centers of these circles, O1 and O2, is the perpendicular bisector of segment BD and the axis of symmetry of these two circles. Points L and M are the points of intersection of these two circles with line O1, O2 that are closer to the segment BD. Now let's select some point E on segment BD and draw two straight lines, one line that go through points M and E and the other line that goes through L and E. The points A and C of intersection of these two lines with these two circles are the other two vertices of ABCD. Notice that if the selected point E is the point of intersection of lines BD and O1, O2, points A and C lie on the same straight line that goes through centers O1 and O2. In this case, the second diagonal AC is perpendicular to the first diagonal BD. Furthermore, E must be selected far enough from points B or D to ensure that the resulting quadrilateral ABCD is convex. Since two central angles BO1M and DO1M are equal, the corresponding inscribed angles BAM and DAM are also equal. Therefore, AE and analogously CE are two angle bisectors of their respective angles BAD and BCD, and since they intersect in point E that belongs to the diagonal BD by well-known theorem about the angle bisectors in a triangle, ABCD constructed this way has the property AB times CD equals BC times DA required by this problem. Next step. Let two points F and H be the other points of intersection of diagonal AC with these two circles. And let's draw chords of their respective circles, FG and HK, that are parallel to the other diagonal BD. The central angles HO1M and KO1M are equal, and therefore the corresponding inscribed angles HAM and KAM are equal, so that line AE is the angle bisector of angle CAK, and analogously line CE is the angle bisector of angle ACG. We have proved that straight line AE is the axis of symmetry for lines AC and AK, and analogously line CE is the axis of symmetry for lines CA and CG. On the other hand, points H and K that lie on lines AC and AK respectively 
are symmetric over the straight line O1, O2. And so are points F and G that lie on lines CA and CG, respectively. Since points B and D are also symmetric over the line O1, O2, and the two axes of symmetry, AM and CL, intersect at point E that lies on segment BD, the point of intersection of AC with BD, point Q, and the point of intersection of AK with CG, point P, are symmetric over the line O1, O2, and both P and Q lie on segment BD. Point P has the property that we're supposed to prove for point X. If you substitute letter P for letter X, we have the sum of angles BPA and DPC equals 180 degrees. This is because point E is the point of intersection of two angle bisectors of triangle APC, from which it follows that line segment PE is also angle bisector of the same triangle. So two angles APE and EPC are equal, from which it follows that the sum of angles BPA and DPC equals 180 degrees. The other interesting thing about point P is that if we draw circumcircles of triangles ABP and CDP, then the second point of intersection that we can call X has the same property that we need to prove for point X, the sum of angles BXA and DXC equals 180 degrees. By chasing inscribed angles shown in the diagram, we can easily prove that. Inscribed angles XAB and XPB are equal since they are subtended by the same arc XB of the same circle. And since angle XPD is supplementary angle for angle XPB, we obtain that angles XAB and XCD are equal, which is the first property required for point X in this problem. Recall that segment AE is the angle bisector of angle BAD and also of angle CAP. This gives us three pairs of equal angles. Angles BAE and DAE are equal, angles CAE and PAE are equal, and also angles BAC and PAD are equal. And analogously, angles BCA and PCD are equal. Consider angle BXD, angle BXD equal sum of two angles, BXP and PXD. Angle BXP is a supplementary angle to BAP since they subtend the minor arc and the major arc BP and angle PXD equal angle PCD as they are subtended by the same arc PD. And then if you subtract from angle BAP angle BAC and add the equal angle PAD, you will get the angle CAD and angle PCD equals angle BCA. If we prolong lines CB and DA until they meet at point R, we can write instead of 180 degrees minus CAD, angle CAR. And from the triangle CAR, we can write that the sum of angle CAR and BCA equals 180 degrees minus angle R. This is the key discovery that in the quadrilateral RBXD, the opposite internal angles R and BXD are supplementary. That means that the quadrilateral RBXD is cyclic. And since angle XBC 
is supplementary to angle XBR and in the cyclic quadrilateral RBXD angle XBR is supplementary to angle XDR which is the same angle as angle XDA. We obtain the equality angles XBC and XDA are equal which is the second property of point X in this problem. This proves that our point X is the point X described in this problem. But we are not done yet. We have proved that the statement of this problem is correct for point X that we have constructed. But what if there is another point X or multiple points X? that have the properties described in this problem, we don't know anything about them. Let's examine if it's possible that quadrilateral ABCD has multiple points X with properties described in this problem. Let's examine the first case when sides BC and AD are parallel, like in a trapezoid. And let's examine the required property that angles XBC and XDA are equal. Let's denote the measure of this angle by Greek letter alpha. We'll start when alpha equals zero. Obviously, there is no such point X which has both of these angles with value zero. If we start rotating segments BC and DA clockwise around points B and D respectively, like a hand of the clock. Obviously, these two hands of two clocks will not intersect until they reach the diagonal BD, for which the two angles XBC and XDA are equal. If we further increase value alpha, there will be no more points of intersection. That means that the only possible locations of point X lie on the diagonal BD. Suppose that quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. And let's examine two required properties of this problem. The first property is that two angles XBC and XDA are equal and second property is that angles XAB and XCD are equal, then obviously the only location possible for point X is at the point of intersection of two diagonals, BD and AC. In order to satisfy the, the property required by this problem, AB times CD equals BC times DA, a parallelogram must be a rhombus. Only in this case, all four sides of parallelogram are equal, and this requirement is satisfied. And in this case, the statement of the problem is obviously correct, since all four angles around point X are 90 degrees angles. In a general case, in a quadrilateral, intersections of two hands begin occurring when one of the hands reaches their common diagonal and intersections stop occurring when the second hand of second clock reaches the same diagonal. Possible location of point X form a smooth curve that starts on one end of the diagonal and ends at the other end, as shown on the diagram. It's possible that the curve is not complete when the first hand reaches the side AB and moves outside of the quadrilateral ABCD. At that point, the intersections are not any longer possible since point X is supposed to be inside quadrilateral ABCD. Our study shows that point X prescribed by two conditions of this problem can only be at the point of intersection of two smooth curves of which one stretches 
the twin vertices B and D, and the other one stretches between vertices A and C in either direction, and the curve may be complete or not complete. In any case, this configuration implies that there can be not more than one point X in any given quadrilateral ABCD. Now we're done.